What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to create this effect at the end of this music video. I know this is like a year old, but I stumbled across it and I thought it looked pretty cool. If we just kind of slowly break this down, I'm going to show you how you can take your footage here, how we can track some footage of a picture frame, and then we can freeze your footage into place and make it look like this hand-drawn oil painting. Pretty cool. Of course, you don't have to do it with just the oil painting. You can dissect the steps that I'm going to show you and apply it in different ways. Maybe you just want to track your footage to a surface for this sort of transition, or maybe you're interested in some of the hand-painted to uh, video footage looks that we're going to talk about. So before we dive into the video, a quick word from today's sponsor, Extra, the first debit card that safely builds your credit. Credit. Being self-employed and having done freelance work myself, I know how important it is to take care of your finances and build your credit score. Now the unique thing about this card, it's actually a debit card, but it can still build your credit score. There's no credit check to sign up for this. They use a flat monthly fee subscription basis as opposed to traditional credit companies that make money from interest as well as hidden fees. The extra card works similar to a charge card. When you use your extra card, they credit the payment and then the next day automatically pay themselves from your account. At the end of the month, they add up your purchases and report them to the major credit bureaus. So why is that important? Well, check out how much you can save just by increasing your credit score. So as you can see, the higher your credit score is, the lower interest rate you can get from a lender. That means you're paying less for any large purchase. On their website, you can see how their payment model stacks up against traditional credit and debit cards. So if you guys are interested, click the link in my description to check out and see why over 75,000 people are using extra to safely build their credit today. Let's go ahead and get started here. All right, guys, so to pull off this effect, you're going to need a few things to start. The first is going to be the footage that you'd like to track onto your painting frame. And the second is going to be the footage of your painting frame or whatever it is you're trying to track your first shot onto. So in my case, I found both of these on pexels.com. In terms of the painting frame, I'm pretty sure I just looked up paint frame and I found one of them. I'll find the exact one and give you guys the link in the description. Again, this is pexels.com, all royalty free. You also search up museum. I think here's the one I used exactly. All right, guys, so here we are in After Effects. We're gonna go to our project bin over here on the left and I'm going to create a new composition and we'll name this tutorial. And then in this new composition, I'm gonna go ahead and drag in those two shots that we mentioned. First being whatever you wanna put in the painting, second being the shot of the painting. So we'll drag those two in there. There's that. And then here's the footage I used to put in the painting, again, from pexels.com right click transform and fit that to comp step number one is track this footage here of our painting so that we can get the camera movement so that when we do paste this onto the painting frame and cover it up um, all this movement of the camera will be reflected upon our top shot so to do that right click on your bottom footage we'll name this actually painting we'll name frame right click on your picture frame or your track shot we're going to go to track and stabilize and we're going to track the camera. All right. So once your computer has tracked your footage, you should see something like this with all these crazy little X marks here. Now, what we're going to do is position our bullseye onto our painting, right click and click create solid in camera. So we can take that track solid. I'm going to click S on my keyboard and then scale that up. And if you press play here, you should now be able to see a preview of your footage with your track solid over top. So make sure that the track solid is matching the motion of the camera here. You guys can also open up the transform options for your track solid. And if for some reason your track solid maybe is looking a little bit like this or something, you can change the orientation just to make that flat. All right, so you have your track solid over top of your image. Let's go ahead and just grab the edges and just kind of like roughly scale that over where we need to. What I'm going to do now is right click on my track solid and click pre-compose and we're going to name this painting in frame and then we can double click on the painting in frame composition here and you can actually delete the track solid. This is pretty much just a placeholder. So let's go back here and grab the footage that we want to put into the frame. So I just named mine one. I'm going to select it and click control X just to cut it from this composition. And then we're going to double click back into the tracked painting in frame comp and then click control V just to paste that in there. So we will center this into the composition. And the nice thing about this, um, this kind of master comp here is what's really going to be changing around the size. So you have all the size matching up and just pressing play. It looks OK as an hour. Definitely making progress. You'll see we're going to have to do some stuff to fix the edges here. But you guys can see how easy it is just to be able to track something, take some footage and just put it into that tracked comp. All right. So to clean up these edges here, it's pretty simple. Um, it also does depend on your footage here. If you're if you have too much movement, too much motion blur, it may be hard to get a nice little track here. But we're going to hide this layer for now. 
and on the bottom frame layer we're just going to go up in the top left and grab our pen tool so grab your pen tool we're going to go ahead and just click on each of the four corners of this picture frame go ahead and connect that mask together and you're going to see everything disappear because by default our mask is set to add so if we select that bottom layer here and we click m on our keyboard to show the mask options we can change the mask from add to none so that way we have our mask here but it's not affecting the scene in any way so we're going to start at the beginning of our timeline here and we're going to right click on the mask that's showing right there and we're going to click track mask now once you do that over on the right this little tracker window should be highlighted keep method default here and go ahead and just click play now you see it may pop off a little bit depending on the track so we may need to um, do a little bit of fixing later down the road as you see our tracker went through and added all of these automatic keyframes so if we put this from none to subtract, you're gonna see we've now just removed the area of the painting here. If you're not seeing that transparency grid, just click and toggle this little button here. So let's just keyframe mask expansion. And whenever it gets like to this part, I'm gonna go ahead and just bump it up a tiny bit. And then let's also just have a tiny bit of feather too. To bring back our footage, we're going to show back painting and frame. And this time we're actually going to take the layer and just drag it beneath the actual frame layer. So this way it's behind it. And of course you can just select this layer, click S and scale it up like that. And now it should be perfectly within the frame that we've masked out. Just like that, very easy to be able to track our footage in. And now we're gonna go and apply the paint effect and we're going to double click into the painting in frame um, track solid that we set up before. So double click in there. So this is the frame that you want to turn into an oil painting. So to mark this spot on my numpad, I'm gonna go ahead and just click the star key. That's gonna put that little marker there. So when I do go back and line everything up, I know exactly where to place it. So on this frame, we're gonna go up to composition, save frame as, and we're gonna save it as a Photoshop layer. If you don't wanna save it as a Photoshop layer, maybe you don't have Photoshop, but you have a free photo editing software like GIMP or like GIMP or GIMP, however you pronounce it. You can just render it out as a PNG. I do have Photoshop, so I'm going to save frame as Photoshop layers. So I'm gonna name this tutorial paint. Then I'll open up the file that I just saved, tutorial paint, and just double click on it to open it within Photoshop. All right guys, so in Photoshop, if you just do a quick search on YouTube, you can find literally thousands of tutorials for Photoshop showing you different ways to stylize so specifically, I'm going to just use these steps shown in this um, photo to oil painting effect uh, tutorial by Pixivu by Pixivu. So I'll link this down below. They even provide free resource materials such as the brush they use here um, and textures that they use at the end. So if you want, you can click and watch this. If not, just follow along with me and I'm just going to quickly um, do what they did, but a lot faster. So once you are in Photoshop, we're going to go up to image and change mode from 16 bits a channel to eight bits. Once you've done that, we're also gonna go up to image, image size. And this may be different depending on how you scaled it with the track solid, but we want to scale this up a lot more so we can have more details with our painting. I'm gonna go ahead and link the width and height, change the value here to percent, and we'll just put this up like 300. Once I've done that, over in the top right, you're gonna see this history panel. If you're not seeing that, just go to window and check on history. And we're gonna click this button to create a new document from current state. So click to select that. So now over on the left, we can grab our art history brush and then using that same Photoshop brush that we downloaded from the tutorial that I mentioned. Again, if you need to just go check out the description. Once you go up to your brushes, you just click import brush and you load the one that they showed there. We're gonna go ahead and click in the bottom right to create a new layer over top of this number one. And then with our art history brush selected, we'll scale that up like 500. And we're just going to color over like this. So once you have all the broad strokes, we're gonna create another new layer. And then what you do is just keep lowering the size of this brush by using the bracket keys on your keyboard. So use the bracket keys to shrink them and you start painting some more. And you see as I make it smaller, it's just adding a bit more detail in there. So again, create another new layer, shrink the brackets. This time, whenever I do it, you're gonna actually see him start coming back into the frame and just keep drawing with the mouse here. And again, make this a lot smaller. And this will bring back a lot more of that detail that was lost. So that's a quick little explanation of creating an oil painting. 
by using the art history brush. Again, if you're confused, if you're running into any issues, just follow the tutorial that I linked below where I learned how to do this in the first place, and they can take you through a little bit more, more step by step. Now, they also provide a bunch of textures in that tutorial. So um, you, can go, you can go on Google Images and download any texture, or you can use the ones that they used. Pretty much what you do is just drag this over top, scale it to frame size, and then you go up to filter, stylize, and emboss. So you click OK. And then you go ahead and just change the blending mode for that texture. So you go to blending modes, and you put that on something like something like overlay, and you can see how oh, you can add some of that realistic texture there. Then once you have your frame, you go up to file, save as, and we're gonna save this as a PNG. So I'll name this tut painted. And then back in After Effects, you should be in the same composition here where we saved the frame as. And again, if you don't remember, we set up that little marker to know exactly where to line it up. So just go and find the Photoshop image that you saved. So mine was um, Tut Painted, drag that in there. And then you can just take the length of this and start it right there. So you should have it be normal and then bam, it goes right into your painted frame. So it's kind of like a painted freeze frame right there. And if we go back into the main comp where we have all the tracking, et cetera, here's what that looks like. It'll just sort of freeze and then become a um, oil painting. Now, if you don't want that little transition to be so sudden, where it just kind of like freezes and then straight oil painting, if you want it to be like the original music video where everything starts to sort of come in one after the, one after the other, just a quick little reminder of that. I'm gonna show you a quick little way you can make your own transition. So if you go to Project Bin and you create a new composition here, we'll name this Transition to Painted. And what you can do is just right click in this gray space for this new blank comp, and we'll create two solids, a white one and a black one. So create your first solid and make it white, then right click new, create a second solid and make it black. So we're gonna take the white layer, place it above the black layer, and we're going to right click and rename that to ink. And then on this ink layer, I'm going to actually just create a simple little transition here using my masking tools. In the top left, I can grab my ellipse tool, um, like right in the center. Now with this mask, I'm gonna go ahead and just open that up and just keyframe everything at the starting position. And then I'm gonna drag a bit and we're gonna take the mask expansion and just bump that up until it takes up the full size of the screen. So here's what this looks like. You can look up a little rough in edges effect under stylize and actually made a full tutorial talking about creating custom transitions using this method. I'll leave that link down below. You can make it to create these like energy transitions, fire burn transitions and like wipe the screen. Uh, if you want, you can like keyframe all of these, make it pretty crazy. So once you have something like this, where it's just the growing transition, go back into your final tut and click into your painting in frame comp. And then right here, whenever it just switches from normal to our painted, we're gonna go to our project bin and let's drag in the composition that we just set up, the transition on paint, the transition to painted, which is those two solids. So we'll drag that in and we'll have it start like right about here. And now what you wanna do is you actually wanna set up a little track map. So if you're not seeing that here, it should just be this drop down. But if you click toggle switches and modes, you should be able to see it. So for our tut painted, take the track mat, set it to something like Luma mat. So that way it'll be normal and then it'll grow out and you'll have your painting frozen like that. Once you have it at this point, all you really have to do is just select all of these layers, right click and pre-compose them into one. So we're just going to name this final. And then if you wanna make that little transition, you can just start at the beginning here, click S on this pre-comp layer and just scale it all the way up until you don't see the picture frame. I should mention this works best when you're working with high resolution footage because of all the scaling. Go to the transform options here for that layer and you just click and drag down to enable the keyframe for all of those. Then you can just drag a tiny bit or whenever you want, whenever you want the footage to zoom out and you click reset. So that way you have this simple zoom out transition of any starting footage to being tracked onto a surface, a painting, whatever it is you wanna do with this. All right guys, so once you add that transition and piece everything together, here's what it should all look like. Pretty cool effect. Again, if you don't want to use this specifically, you can still dissect the steps that I use. There's a lot of useful information. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you in the next one.